Good evening, and welcome to Tambane's Sleepy Time Mumbles, a podcast you can miss. I'm Dan Bain, and each and every episode I improvise a low-stakes podcast for you to fall asleep to. Before I begin this evening's episode, I would like to share some anecdotal feedback that I've received that I find gravely concerning. And that is that several people have communicated to me both IRL in real life and in a digital forum that they have been simply listening to the episode as a piece of entertainment. Now, I'm all one for being able to separate the art from the artist and to acknowledge that once the creator releases something into public, they no longer have a authority over how the material is consumed or for what purpose or indeed what intent planned or unplanned is read within the creation that they've released. But nonetheless, I will say that listening to this not as a a sleep aid is an abomination in the eyes of the Lord. If you would like to weigh in on this, you are welcome to do so via five star review on Apple Podcasts. The only way I listen to feedback. (laughs) But that can wait. For now, put down your phone, turn off your screens, and close your eyes. Now it's time to be mumbled. To sleep. Season five, episode four, Mass Effect from Memory. Mass Effect is a space future RPG shooter made by Bioware and was released in I don't know 2009 Anyway, early, probably before 2010, sometime, and I have a great affection for this game. 
previous episodes, my episode indeed on XCOM 2 War of the Chosen, parts 1 and parts 2, I discussed in detail the mechanics of the game, which makes sense because that is a game of systems, multiple perfectly tuned systems that you replay in different permutations but are ultimately the same. Mass Effect is more of a narrative in that you play the Commander Shepard, the protagonist who goes on a wonderful space adventure. So I will be attempting not to recall the gameplay mechanics of Mass Effect but more so the plot. Those of you who are aware of the game will immediately be questioning the whole trilogy? No. This is just Mass Effect 1. Now, how good will this recollection be? Great question. I have played Mass Effect 1 through fully three three times completely yeah the most recent of these playthroughs was in twenty twenty three as I purchased the legendary edition of the game all three uh, all, all three episodes plus all of the bonus DLC content so will this recap include bring down the sky yes Will it involve Arcturus Station? No, because that's not part of the Legendary Edition download set. Because they couldn't find the code for it when they compiled the Legendary Edition. Will this also be filled with trivia? Entirely possible. Now, Before the story itself begins, there is a brief prologue to set the essential information around the setting that you need to know before you go in. Essentially, it is this. In 2100 or something, humans uh, exploring Mars discover a a alien uh, t library I guess a repository of a data repository where a now extinct species of aliens had clearly been observing Earth. Uh, from this, there was a massive <coughs> leap forward in technology, including the discovery of uh, mass effect fields, which uh, allow the manipulation of an, an item's mass and, and gravity in such a way that it can move, it can be accelerated uh, 
out to at the speed of light via an enormous uh, driver mechanism called a, a mass effect relay, uh, one of which is discovered uh, just outside of the, the Earth solar system. Uh, so, having discovered the means for these uh, star to star jumps uh, or cluster to cluster jumps um, uh, it is done and immediately uh, humanity encounters a alien species, the Turians, uh, who are a, a, a very warlike and security minded. Uh, so immediately what happens is what's called the first contact war. Uh, and this is the humanity's introduction to the wider the wider galaxy uh, but at the uh, also mass effect fields can be used <coughs> um, people can be dosed I guess with it uh, and gain the power to manipulate it Kind of psychically, I guess. Um, yeah, you know, it's like space magic. Uh, so anyway, that's where it starts. And <clears throat> so the first contact war has ended. Um, and humanity is an acknowledged kind of part of the galactic makeup of... Uh, what's known as council races is that everything I'm sure other things will become essential to know as we go anyway it begins on uh, a spaceship uh, the Normandy which is an experimental stealth spaceship that has been engineered by Turian and uh, human co-work. Uh, it's captained by uh, Captain Anderson, who was one of the highest ranking uh, human military officers in the uh, Systems Alliance, which is the name of the human military now. And on board the ship is also uh, Chancellor Udina, who is one of uh, Earth's leading uh, politicians. And the two of them are discussing uh, Shepard, uh, the player character, you, in this instance. And Shepard is about, Shepard is a, I guess, a special forces soldier, or operative is perhaps a better word, uh, and uh, is about to be honoured as the first uh, human spectre, which is uh, like a, a extrajudicial agent of the council who, you know, can do things their own way. I guess it's like Jedi and Star Wars or, oh no, they worked for, uh, anyway. You work outside the system just being, if you're a spectre, you don't answer to, no, or you answer only to the council and they, uh, you don't answer the local government. It's like the Inquisition in 
Warhammer 40k. Okay, anyway. They're discussing shepherds. Uh, upcoming induction into this. And then... But in the meantime, they're actually flying to a planet called Eden Prime, which is a human colony that is... Uh, I don't know, something's... Is it Eden Prime or is that the second one? I think it might be you go back... Anyway. Uh, which has sent a distress signal. And uh, so you are, uh, and also on the mission is Nihilus, who is a full spectre. He is a Turian. And so you deploy, uh, and you, you arrive at Eden Prime, and then there's this video thing, uh, an emergency call from the planet, and there's attacks and shooting and explosions but also there's this giant creepy spaceship that looks a bit like a giant hand and everyone is very alarmed about this because no one knows what what that is uh, and Nihilus is like okay we're going to go down here and we're trying to find Saren, who is another spectre. And we're going to find him and we're going to find out what's going on. And Nihilus is like, I go better on my own. And he shoots off by himself. And you go down with Caden Alenko, who is, has um, biotic powers and is Canadian. Um... That's his, uh, on the emergency, um, uh, in broadcast that you saw, um, the person talking to you is Gunnery Chief Williams, who is, um, a, 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 a lady who is racist to aliens, but we don't know that yet, but we're going to discover that. Uh, and where's the pink armor? That's uh, and you. So you and Caden and a guy called Jenkins go down to see what you can get up to. And basically, Jenkins gets shot. Ashley joins your squad. catch up to uh, Nihilus just in time to watch Saren shoot him in the head and you're like oh my gosh Saren is bad in some way and then uh, there's some bombs and you have to deactivate them and then uh, Saren has discovered this kind of piece of proto-civilization alien technology from um, uh, what are they called the Protheans which is the kind of proto-species that had the same library on Mars this device uh, called the Beacon uh, and when you find it and touch it, it has this kind of communication with you uh, and it enables you, you kind of have this prophecy of, of the future and of the Prothean race being systematically exterminated uh, by a race of uh, extra galactic artificial intelligences called the Reapers uh, so then Shepard goes back to 
the Citadel, which is where the Council uh, are based. Uh, and um, becomes a spectre. Yes, gets made a, a full spectre, but um, also uh, Shepard is like, well, hang on a second. Saren is out there being mischievous and also uh, also there is a, a super extra galactic super race of genocidal artificial intelligences looking to um, probably come back and harvest us that feels like a problem uh, and the council dismisses these claims uh, and then Shepard can puddle around on the citadel for a bit and you can do lots of little adventures and little side quests and things like that and, and talk to people about facts and, and whatnot. Uh, but the main thing is then you you need to do some investigating uh, to find out oh what Saren had been up to and you meet a Turian called Garrus and he uh, joins your team and Garrus is like mm, kind of like Space Batman definitely in the first one he's quite like he's a he works for Citadel security but he he hates the rules and he hates his dad does he hate his dad he has problems with his dad anyway also Garrus will come with you on the adventure too. Uh, and then also you meet a, a Krogan called Rex, who, which is kind of like, a, it's kind of like, they're kind of like a big turtle, a big bipedal, kind of lizardy turtle thing. Um, and they love to do fighting and also you meet uh, Talizora who is a Quarian um, and they live in kind of these full environmental suits because uh, they have very low immune systems uh, she has some information on Saren or something about where wherever he's gone so anyway then uh, the Normandy gets put in lockdown for some reason and then uh, um, Anderson is uh, grounded and then he gifts the Normandy to Shepard and off you fly and then you can do space adventures, kind of. So now you, the game kind of expands out, and you can go to different planets and do stuff and stuff and things. And sometimes you can land on planets and have a little hoon about. And sometimes you can just look at them. And sometimes they have kind of uh, the next step of the plot on them. And so. Uh, the next one of those is uh, so you can choose what order you want to do them in uh, let's talk about Neveria first uh, <coughs> so you land on Noveria and um, uh, Noveria is a a kind of bureaucratic world that it is used for scientific research and and it's a frost planet, um, so it's all very hothy. Um, 
and uh, you're trying to find out what's oh maybe we should talk about Feroz first actually yeah let's do that so uh, Feroz you land there and it's kind of a it's war torn kind of city uh, kind of and you land at a place called Zeus Hope uh, uh, and all the people are being weird uh And then you, um, and then you go on a big drive across the skyways, which are these kind of ruined highway kind of things. Uh, and there's a thing at the end. Ah. Oh. There's like a geth ship. Oh, so, so the geth are this other race of artificial intelligences that are working with Saren to, it seems, herald the return of the Reapers. And so there's one of those there, and you've got to get rid of that. Um, but the people of Zeus Hope are all being brainwashed by this plant kind of intelligence that's underneath it. <laughs> and you get these stun bombs and you can throw stun bombs at them or you can just kill them uh, depending on whether you're good or bad uh, yeah and then um, what else happens on Pharos? do you get Liara? is that where you get Liara? let's say it is anyway you find Liara Tassoni who's um uh, she's like the galaxy's foremost expert in Prothean archaeology. So she's, yeah. Um, that's that's her bag. And, so, and she joins the team as well. Um, and, I don't know, Saren gets away or something. I feel like something else happens on Ferris, but... Uh, and anyway, you defeat the Thorian Creeper, and uh, the Thorian, the Creepers are the creatures that it makes. Um, and then you go to Neveria, and as I was saying, it's a kind of frost planet, and you have to get out of the... First you have to go to peak 19 or something which is this experimental research station that's out uh, well outside the bounds of where you are that's kind of gone dark and you go there and because there's where Matron Benezia who is Liara's mother yes which is why I did it in this order uh, is there and um, she is kind of joined Sarah and she's been indoctrinated into his kind of thing and so you defeat her and there's also um, there's also an alien that's called the Rachni that's living or captured that's been being experimented on and you can make a decision as to whether or not they should be um Uh, released um, and the Rachni Wars were a thing and the Krogan were bred to fight the <coughs> or, um, to, or uplifted to fight the Krogan Wars on uh, fight the Rachni Wars on behalf of of the council um Uh, and then you find out some more facts, I guess, that here's where Saren is. He's on this place called Vermeer. And so then you go to Vermeer to find his base of operations. And uh, at the end of uh, Vermeer, you get kind of 
uh, things don't go well for the team and uh, you have to make a decision between which one of Caden or Ashley is going to uh, kind of remain behind to hold the fort and they uh, they die as a result of uh, your orders um, yeah, and then uh, anyway get some more information on the Protheans and then you f- fly to this place called Ios uh, and it's still always kind of pursuing Saren and kind of what's Saren up to and anyway Saren is on I- Ios we discover that uh, Ios? Ilos might be Ilos we discover that the Saren is uh, working with Sovereign which is the giant spaceship that we saw right at the start and it's actually senti- that's, that is a reaper it's a sentient massive spacecraft and he's working to speed up the return of the the Reapers. And we um, talk to like a Prothean virtual intelligence and get a whole lot of extra information and blah, blah. Um, and then it turns out that there is a, a portal in Iowas that will transport you direct to the Citadel and Saren has already gone through it and is about to I don't know uh, is about to link it to dark space to (laughs) direct beam the reapers to um, to the Citadel the heart of council space so you go through it and chase down Saren and then there's a big fight and it's revealed that he is pretty much turned into kind of a robot thing uh, and the Citadel gets trashed and then uh, but but because you've stopped that only Sovereign gets through and he's instead of all of the Reapers and he's trashing it all over the place um and the whole Citadel fleets kind of <coughs> attack it. And um, uh, and you can choose whether you... Oh, the council are being evacuated and um, they're about to be killed. And there's a decision, I guess, on whether or not you save the council or not. Um, and anyway the Citadel fleets uh, manage to defeat um, Sovereign at great costs you beat Saren in a a fight and then um, yeah and then you go to bring down the sky uh which is um, a Batarian terrorist is attempting to fly an asteroid into a city. Is that the one? I think so. Uh, <coughs> so yeah. Uh, and that's pretty much it. I think uh, inventory management is not good. The combat is a little bit janky. Uh, I think it came out just before Gears of War and has a very similar but not nearly as refined cover-based shooter kind of mechanic um, that was going to be refined over the next... significantly over the next two games. Um... But yeah, that's that's Mass Effect One. That was season four, episode five. Mass Effect 
from memory. Sleepy Time Mumbles is produced by Noosed Octopus Theatre, etc. and invented and hosted by me, Dan Bain. You can follow the show on the social, your social media of choice if your social media of choice is Instagram or Facebook. <laughs> you can sign up for the newsletter in the links to the show notes and as always the best thing you can do to help the show out is rate and review or tell a friend until next time good night sleep tight